please invocation as we stand with uh, Parker giving the Pledge of Allegiance, please. Bow our heads. Father, thank you for allowing us to be here tonight to make critical decisions for the citizens of Pascagoula. We love this city. We would like to ask you to be in our minds and be in our hearts to do what's right. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Please join me in the pledge. To the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Righty. So uh, now we begin the project workshop. It's uh, it starts off with uh, Frank Quarter. Go ahead. Mayor and Council, so what you are looking for tonight, uh, as you know, we've got about two and a half million dollars of proceeds from the gas sale uh, that, Mr. that Ms. Turner is going to be talking to you about how to spend those to benefit the city. And then uh, after she does her presentation and you all do your tabulations as far as um, ranking those projects as far as priorities, I'll come back to you and discuss paving uh, with the funds that we've been given annually from the county and we'll rank those on what you would like to see uh, going the rest of this budget year and then Ms. Turner will come back at the end and, fi and follow fi finalize the conversation about the priority setting with the those infrastructure funds so with that I'll turn it over to Ms. Frank, Turner Frank, yes we leave, we, there's been some discussion about exactly how much money is available and I've heard a lot of numbers thrown around okay, so, and, hmm. and I guess what I'm hearing is is Perhaps omission versus, sure. uh, you know, I've heard K, uh, Katrina CBDG grant money, MDA money, sure. is the 2.5 million uh, from the gas proceeds or what's left from the gas proceeds uh, all that's available. So the uh, 2.5, there's, of course, you'll remember you have three million dollars on the gas sale. So what the city manager, Mr. Frederick and Ms. Turner and I have been discussing is about 500,000 or so should be left for contingencies at this point. I'm dealing, still dealing with those uh, issues around that cell of the gas system. Uh, so you're looking at about $2.5 million on these infrastructure projects that shows that she's discussing tonight. Other pots of money that, that you've gotten so far, um, the mayor's uh, been instrumental in helping get the 1.5 for that off ramp uh, that goes into the Point Park which we are meeting with, uh, second meeting with Neil Schaefer this week uh, to get that going. Uh, we also were able to receive the $2 million from the special session last year that goes towards Ingalls Avenue. That project's being drawn up now and drafted, and Jackie can speak of that if you like for two, along with another million from MDA to go with that with KCD, KCD Beijing funds. Also, the governor has texted the mayor and said that about 1.75 additional into that so you're looking at close to five million dollars so far committed to that the Ingalls Avenue project from market to the East Bank um, entrance gate but that doesn't affect any of this discussion tonight that's all ancillary stuff tonight's just focusing on that 2.5 million with uh, the gas sale funds there, there was also a discussion at, when we were contemplating the uh, the sale of the gas system yes. that some of those proceeds might have to be used to pay off some lingering one I can't remember if it's 2011 or which bond it was but one of the older bonds did that ever so transpire all the monies that were uh, uh, acquired from the gas so that, that three million dollars uh, all go back into infrastructure projects of some level and there was nothing left over to pay back for bonds okay so we're, we're under no obligation That's to correct. to make a payment based upon the, okay. That's correct all right okay. now um, we're because at one time we were only talking about spending eight hundred thousand, and the rest of it was going to go against debt service. I mean, yeah. did somebody tell us we had to spend all two point five million? A couple of meetings ago, if you remember, um, uh, Butler Snow came in and and, and, and told y'all that all the funds that we received from the gas sale had to be used for infrastructure projects in the city uh, to accommodate uh, that requirement. So, uh, what you see tonight is trying to trying to make sure that. Uh, those projects are done the way you want them and in what timeline they want them and that they're done adequately and appropriately based on the funding that is available now. Now, we also, just for clarity, um, th this is all we're talking about is the gas money. That's so, correct. That's correct. Because the 1.5 is for the off ramp that That's we correct. got and then 2 million from the special session. That's correct. That goes to Ingalls. 
along with then the, the additional one million right. we got goes there. The one point seven five million goes there. That's correct. And the two additional ones that are coming up he proposed would be for that as well. That's correct. And we also have some outstanding funding that we, we were notified about from Tidelands uh, to help with uh, Lighthouse Park renovations, uh, about $400,000 or so there, um, along with the $200,000 that we got this year for the um, for Point Park. So uh, that's all ancillary type stuff as far as this, this discussion goes. This goes primarily to um, projects that Jackie and the council have made as priorities. Uh, during your terms to see the, that they get done in this city would be water, sewer, those kind of things. Well, I don't mean to, I don't mean to jump sure. ahead on that, but I'm just uh, just want to make sure that we're where we need to be on that Ingalls um, because we should in in my meetings up there back and forth we should have we should have about uh, nearly. Should be close to six million when it's all said and done. Se, se, well, actually, it should be closer to eight million. I think if you got one point seven five, one point seven five, one point seven five, which is what what they told or, or us. Or Let's just say I'm, that's that's what they I'm, say. I'm going to report what I know in hand. Uh, what right. I know in hand. So we know, but we so we know we got about six million in hand. Right. That's right. Okay. Now, would that get us where we need to be? All right, so when they broke that down for me, uh, the option, if we couldn't put it under, would be that we would bury the pipe to come back later to chase it through. We can, uh, we can at least do that. And what we'll be looking at is but, prioritizing like crossings first, even if we can't get the right, one. Right. So there's a series of priorities that will follow, and that will determine what their final quotes come in balance with what the final proceed numbers balance. Okay, so as we move forward, though, uh, if we can't, uh, if we can't bury it underground like we want, because I realize I've learned a lot more about that, um, and it is a very expensive process. So, but our uh, our view of that should be from this point forward that if we can't bury them, we'll at least install the chases now so that a future council can that would uh, allow them to do it at a much uh, reduced cost. Okay. Frank, one other thing. Sure. I, I just so, because I, I, this may have been said before and I just don't remember it. Sure. But the KCBDG grants and the MDA monies that the mayor has gone and gotten, those are funds that have to be dedicated for facilitating uh, access to the East Bank. Is that? That's correct. It's, okay. It's, it's identified for that corridor. Okay. For the corridor would include Market Street, presumably. Market to Mark from Market on Ingalls Avenue to the East Bank entrance. Okay, but not on Market itself. That's correct. Okay. I think that's what we talked about. That other. Okay. The other two one point seven five would be from Market and start working towards Highway Nine. That's ultimately what that would do. That's but that's the pie in the sky right now. Right. We know we got we got this, and that gets okay. us where we're going. So with that, Jackie can take over. Okay, so um, just I want to kind of set the stage for what I hope to have happen this evening. I've got packets that I'm going to hand out to each of you in just a few minutes. Um, it's going to be a little overwhelming, I think, when you see how many efforts we have sitting in line and shuffling. The later in the day it gets, I can't read papers, but then I can't see you if I leave them on. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, it's, it's a lot of stuff that we have on this list that we want to take care of. Uh, basically, this entire list was developed from outstanding efforts that we know we need to get to, and we just need to find a way to fund it. We asked all of you to contribute uh, via email things to make sure that we didn't overlook anything. So all of those emails were um, <coughs> integrated into this. There's a number of ongoing efforts that I've been working on, some of them 10, 12 years. Uh, so this reflects, to the best of my ability, <laughs> a full list of everything that we know that needs to happen. Now, when you get this list, 
I'm just going to show you what it looks like real quick. It's, it's five pages of this, and you'll see A, B, C, and D. Um, what I'm going to ask, and it turns out there's 120 projects. So there's a lot to read through. I want you to, um, if you will, kind of scan through them, ask me any questions you have about what they are, so you can make sure you understand them. And then at the top, I've got a reminder here to circle 30 each, A, B, C, and D. So the way that this works best when you get this much data is pick the 30 that you think are the most important and go ahead and do A's, pick the 30 you think are least important and go D, and then the last 60 split between B and C. And what's going to happen is as, as soon as y'all get finished with that, I'm going to sit here, I'm going to tally up all the data from everybody who votes so that before you leave tonight, you're going to have a cumulative idea of what you as a council feel are the most important. That doesn't mean we have to follow them in that order, but it gives us all an understanding of, of where we collectively want to focus. And of course, then we'll balance that against available money. Now, the one thing that I do want to bring to your attention is the first three projects on this list are intentionally the three projects that we have brought to you before as the things that the staff feels are the most critical. They are the closest to being shovel ready. None of them are fully shovel ready, but they're close. Um, and, and I'll give you the paperwork and, you can, and, and we'll talk about the money at the end of it. Basically, the idea is this first round is figure out what efforts you guys want to focus on and then we can start going from there and figure out how much money we have once that's done. So with that, I'll hand them out for answer the So as you see, there's, there's a number of pages there. Um, so if you will just kind of read through them, there's a number next to each one of them. So if you have a question about when you can refer to which project number it is. And I'll be standing right here. As you're filling these out, if you have more questions, I'm happy to answer questions. What is this other sheet that's, that That's the here? street thing that Frank will be following up with okay. in between. Right. Okay. So we're, we're dealing with two separate pots of money here. This is strictly the two and a half million from the gas sale. Frank will be talking about the other list with county paving money. And so there's, there's two different sets of questions we need answered. So the one that you just gave us, the first three are the priorities, Box, Boxwood, Univista, and Briarwood. Based on the staff's recommendation, yes. Of course, if all of you feel like it's different, we can move in a different direction. But that's what we'd like to recommend as the highest. And, and can you, in 60 seconds or less, tell us or explain what the Boxwood drainage improvements are? Sure. So it drains um, a lot of Northwood, Southwood, Eastwood, um, goes through Boxwood, which is kind of the tail off of that box of streets, um, and then goes south and then east out to the bayou at 22nd Street. Uh, we have at least one sinkhole out there that you could easily fit a car in. Um, it's been failing, continually getting worse, and as we started tracing that pipe north and south from there, just about every joint is starting to show more sinkholes and more failures. We were hoping we could just do a point repair. That's not the case. Um, we've got pavement. We've got yards that have been failing for years, and the only way to correct this where we're not just going to be patching it every six months is going to be go from... I think it's the corner of Driftwood and Boxwood, basically come across the driveways, come through the yard where the large hole is, south where there's continuing failing joints all the way down and then out into 22nd Street. And one of the reasons that we're looking at the entire run is that it also does not have the capacity it needs to drain everything upstream of there. So when we do these projects, rather than putting a Band-Aid on them, if we put the right size pipe in the ground, we will be improving overall drainage citywide. So it's not just a localized yeah. one or two people, right. but several neighborhoods impacted. Do you, do you want us to uh, put a circle even on the streets uh, that we haven't seen personally or just the one that we know personally? This list, what I'd like for you to do is do 30 A's, 30 B's, 30 C's, and 30 D's. And if it's something that you don't know about at all, probably it's going to be a low priority for you. Okay. If the other six council members feel like it's a high priority, it'll balance out. Can you tell us where the riverfront bulkhead is that by the harbor? 
It is in front of the condos that are being built now in the publicly owned section. There's a uh, piece of the bulkhead that's allowing dirt to seep out through it that was not open and allowing that to happen when the whole thing was built. It needs to be um, injected, sealed, and then backfilled in where that doesn't continue to happen. Jackie, on this boxwood project, does it relate any way to number 20, the Longfellow Acres main drainage? It does not. There's another set of failing pipes that go in right at their entryway under and in and off to the west. And they're having a few sinkholes in that area too, right? Mm -hmm. I thought. There's one in here for Oakhurst and there's another down further on Longfellow. Okay. Why do the sinkholes occur? Is that because of the uh, collapsed pipe? The most common reasons are are two. One is there was a lot of corrugated metal pipe put in 50 to 60 years ago, and 50 to 60 years is about how long it takes to rust and fail. Right. The other one is if you have any yeah. pipe, whether it's plastic, metal, or otherwise, they're generally put in in either 20 or 8 foot joints, depending on the size of the pipe, and that dirt moves, the joints start separating, and the dirt falls in. I don't want to be a hater of this system, but I'm looking at projects. I don't have a clue. <laughs> <laughs> we were just, we're just, you know, just talking. Talking. So you can't so you can't deal. Yeah, I mean it's just a get, I mean a lot of them I'm well, we were familiar just, with, but I don't I just I think, don't know that I'm educated enough. Okay, on well let me let me offer this then. Okay. I know names of complainants like Lisa King, that's a priority for me. And so and that, that relates Rhonda Clark. To, number two. That relates to project two, Rhonda Clark you know, relates to number one. And I'm happy to answer those questions as I, as you're filling them out, I'll walk around and answer any. If you do not know a project at all, maybe leave it off, but don't put any more than thirty A's or thirty B's as your highest priorities. I mean to me that's kind of fair. It will all add up. And just to, just to reiterate this, I think this one all on the board, so I know it, it does work. It gives a very good objective snapshot. So whether or not you think it, it, it at this point, I'm not sure. And, and another thing to keep in mind, too, is if there's, a, if there's like something on here that maybe only one of you are even familiar with and the other six don't know it, so it gets a low priority, but it becomes a safety issue in three months, in my mind, it bump, bumps up to the top regardless if we're, if we're dealing with health or safety issues. I'm looking at something that I see on the sheet where, in particular, uh, drainage improvement, naturally, that should be an A, an, an a and also sinkholes. I think you're going to find more than 30 of those. That's what I'm saying. So, so what do you do? You so, have to pick 30 to go on the top. We probably have money for three or four. That's the problem here. We're dealing with 120 projects, and we probably have money for maybe six of these. Depending, Some of them are much smaller, and we can get more in. So just the top three are, you, you're, are the priority that your office has. The rest is not. Or does this go from one to no, I bumped those three to the top, and some of the other on the front page are things that we've been dealing with for a long time. Those three, in my opinion, are the ones that can relieve the most safety and um, flooding water issues all collectively with the biggest bang for the buck, I guess. Um, I have, I would be hard pressed to only pick 30. Yeah, well, <laughs> my look, top I mean, priorities. I've been be out hard. there with. I've been out there with you. I, I, I get it. Um, I would be very hard pressed. The problem is we just don't have money to fix thirty of them, so we have to figure out where to start now, and do something. This doesn't. This doesn't. Um, uh, the paving. I want to just make sure that I'm clear because we have a paving. Uh, we had a paving discussion a number of times. Met with the board of supervisors. That has nothing to do with this list, right? Correct? That's the other list that you have that Frank will be talking about in just so a minute. I think, I think the council needs to know that as well because mm -hmm. we have a list. We went over priorities with the paving, so that has nothing to do with that. Because one of the things that I'm really focused on too is uh, paving a lot of streets. Right. But uh, you know, I've been in and out of Bel Air Street with the residents over there. Um, so that wouldn't be on this list. Right. And as so, soon as we vote on this, then you're going to have another whole discussion specifically about paving. And I know Bel Air's on there. Golly. That's another packet. All right. Um, so, okay. So Frank's going to talk about this list. This is just the two and a half million. Well, that's going to go real quick. 
It's going to go From very what quick. I see. So the top three projects, as we proposed on number one and number three, the budget that I'm proposing would do the construction as well. The number two, at this point, I'm proposing we finish design and acquire all the easements and continue to look for funding because we don't have enough to complete that one. The combined effort of those three will get us at about 1.1, 1.2 million. So the whole point of this is, okay, so what are your highest priorities moving after that for the next 1.3? Question Jackie, oh, go, oh, go ahead, Matt. No, you go ahead. Um, this, where am I at? I put the numbers on there so we can all go to the no, same no, spot. No, no, we'll just get past it. Uh, seeing some bulk heading on Bayou Chico. Where is that? Is that on behind Bates Avenue or? That's the that? intent, yes, is down off of Bates, okay. um, south of Ingalls there. Okay. Uh, on number four, it, that seems to be a pretty broad. You know, I and I reduction program in progress, and while certainly mm -hmm. laudatory, I, I, I'm a little concerned about putting that as an A because, it, you know, you, you could easily spend tens of millions of dollars sure. to reduce I and I yeah. in the city. I mean, it can is there any more spe specificity you can give us? Well, what I'm on looking at, one? what I'm looking at honestly right now is, is this a high priority for this council? If it is then the next step in this discussion is, okay, at what level? Are we talking about 50,000, 100,000, million? Um, at what level do you want to invest in that? If it's not one of your top 30 priorities, then we just continue to move on some others that are. And of course, any sewer work that we do is gonna help with that problem. It's just right. not concentrated on it. So really this right here, this effort is to find out collectively, is that a priority for you as a council? Gosh, man, there's so many priorities. <laughs> well, let me let me ask you this a different way mm -hmm. to make sure I'm including it. So when it floods, and I go through over there by Lenny's, that's going to be the Live Oak Market Street drainage improvement. Correct. Okay, so when it floods on 14th Street, how many of these 14th Street projects are we talking about? The flooding about? on 14th in Street, where you that. come down like through Paul Harvey and Taylor, well, like that probably area. from Ingalls all the way to Convent, probably. There's some intersections <clears throat> that are worse than others. Those are all at the at the north, not north, upstream end of the East Lawn subdivision. So the combination of the East Lawn subdivision, which is number 15, and the 14th Street infrastructure, number 13, would it, would attack that. See, that's what I need to know. That's so a good what question. what about the, uh, and we're getting uh, Briarwood, those problems, are, have we alleviated any of those drainage issues back we, there? We, we haven't. Know? We need to route it around that neighborhood. And so okay, that so, one there so is. So that's the number three Briarwood. Right. Uh, I'm trying to think of somewhere else that water really gets high. The uh, Sherwood. I think it was Sherwood. Sherwood, yeah. This, this Sherwood is, is on here. And also this on Pilman Court in Saratoga. Sherwood drainage improvements. That's that area just south of the IG Levy area mm -hmm. down through there. Correct. Okay. Uh, who else is coming? Which one's Sherwood, uh -oh, Scott? Which one? Uh, number 104. <clears throat> And after you get after, like I said, after you get out that first couple, I really tried to shuffle these up so they weren't no. suggestive. <laughs> oh, I remember the other one, the Andrew Street. <laughs> Andrew Street did not make this list. It okay. seems that seems to be more but, of a maintenance. Will the, the Chris top. Well McFeela drainage pipe help that area? A little bit. So the the lift stations. Um, That's a lot. What is the cost of one lift station? It depends on the size. There are some that are probably in the neighborhood of sixty to seventy-five thousand. Some of the really small ones, and then there's some that are probably in the neighborhood of seven to eight hundred. The I think there's two that are listed on here. Well, three, I guess. The um, Victor Street lift station is one of the very small ones. The Moorhead lift station is on the smaller side. You're probably talking in the neighborhood of one hundred fifty to two hundred. Um, you can get, and then the Ford lift station is not so much a lift station as a force main relocation because it pumps into a very shallow manhole, and I'd like to extend it to a deeper one that can accept the flow and not overflow. So these, all these lift stations, would, is that a significant uh, improvement to overall draining if you replaced these lift stations? How how would that versus replacing? Uh, 
you know, the pipes and stuff. Lift stations really will not help at all with um, reducing flow. The lift stations, basically, the ones that, the two that we're looking at are old, are failing, and are, it's, it's essentially an end of a life thing that they need to be upgraded and replaced to. So what two are those? Jackie, on number 59, you've got uh, Martin, 42-inch storm drain pipe replacement. Is that all of Martin, north of Ingalls, south of Ingalls? This is focusing what? on south of Ingalls. Okay. All right. How does the, I was fixing to ask that same question on Martin, because Martin and Ingalls and then down at, I guess, Mercier, and it's always been a problem. Did any of that major work we have done, had done a year ago mm -hmm. alleviate any of that? From what we can tell, it's helped considerably. It's still very flat and low, mm -hmm. but it is certainly it is draining more and more quickly than it used to. It still gets real high, though. If, if you yeah. get well, Mercier has always been a bad spot right there. Uh, yeah. yeah. Man, oh man. <laughs> it's not easy. Yeah, it's. I hate. I hate. I have to put one above the other. Well, and that's, I mean, that's kind of the beauty of this process. If you really quickly pick your 30 favorite and then your next 30, it's going to shake out collectively. And like I said, that's not a hard and fast rule of what we're going to do. It just gives us a good blueprint to kind of start okay. following. So, um, as you know, I've been losing my mind over McPhilia. Uh, the graves underwater out there. Um, Will this, this cemetery drain and drainage and improvements, would that alleviate? That's the hope. The idea there is to spend some time really evaluating whether we need some detention ponds or reroute okay. it and then to implement that. And that's, that's that drainage on the back side of it, uh, you this know, where would, my dad's buried, yeah, where all this, that floods back the there. The whole idea here would be to really look at the thing as a whole because uh, the more we put in can't think of the word it's the little curbing that people put around plots and elevate plots as a, a full area that pushes water somewhere else and if we continue to elevate everywhere where there's um, plots that are being used we continue to elevate all of that if we don't mitigate that we've already got houses and businesses immediately adjacent that are flooding and we're making that worse so we're looking at a way to comprehensively evaluate it and mitigate it where we don't cause damage to anybody. We want to make it improved without just pushing it down the road. Under, uh, are you finished, Mayor? Yeah. Under 110, Inner Harbor, Inner Harbor dredging. Mm -hmm. um, when was the last time, to your knowledge, that it was dredged? The harbor itself was dredged post Katrina. The channel, out around the point, I believe the county helped us with just recently. Okay. But the and harbor itself, post Katrina, was dredged to pre Katrina limits only. So we're talking six feet? I don't remember. Don't, oh, I mean, okay. All right. So I'm asking a question about how we named it Market Street, even though I'm not familiar. I don't know if that's something that, that's still covered. Does that still flood right there? Mm -hmm. It Badly. does? Mm -hmm. Is that on the list? It is. I thought I remembered seeing that towards the front. It is number 60. Okay. Well, that's that one. Okay. Yeah, it, it's labeled as market in Live Oak, a block south, right. but that's the, yeah, that's where that water goes. I think that's a good one. Which number was that, Jack? 60. 60. 60? Oh, okay. Yeah, right, right. On 99, Jackie. You have water main replacement Delmas. Is that the street or the subdivision? Street. Because okay. I've noticed, and I apologize for not sending pictures to you, I, I recently was on Delmas between uh, Communi and uh, Pascagoula Street, and a part of the brick pavers there have dramatically dropped in terms, and now meaning that the concrete edge sits up three, maybe even four inches above the pavers. I mean, that, like, it's begging for someone to so trip. Del, Del Mass and Canty? Canty, I'm sorry, Canty. Yes. Okay. It's on the north side. 
uh, you got the sewing shop, you got the okay. Heidel, uh, the old McClellan's where Heidelberg Steinberger is now, but that area right there has dropped a, a lot in just two years. Okay, that's something that we can get um, property maintenance and the street folks to look at and see if they can reset that. Okay. When you talk about widening Ingalls Avenue to market to Bel Air, um, I, explain that to me, please. At least one of the council put that in as a wish list item, and I included it. I don't what recall who. What number is that? 39. Mm -hmm. Oh, I put that in there. Just that's kind of a wish list. It's a good one. So, Jackie, the two hospital road projects, both of those north of 90, or are they not going to be included in the MDOT project that's widening that there? There's two, if I remember. One should be listed as a water line extension and one as a drainage pipe. Correct. Okay, the water line extension um, from south of the railroad across Highway 90 and tying in at the hospital was originally included as part of the phase two project and it had to be removed with the budget concerns that we had. That's one that we could pop in very easily as a separate project and MDOT would not assist with that funding. Um, the drainage project is north of Highway 90, up by um, north of the pond, up by the, uh, um, the dentist and the OBGYN and everybody out there. There's a big pipe up there that needs to be replaced. So do you have any budgeting information on the one that's south of 90 while we're doing that project? Just I the, mean, the water line? Yeah, I mean, is it 50000 or is it 500000 It was, if I remember right, the water line part was about 200000 that we took out of that project. And how critical do you consider it? I mean, I hate that we're going to put a bunch of money and we're going to do all that and then... Right, so the reason that that was pulled out as a separate one is because it involves permitting with Highway 90 and the railroad, and because basically it's a bore. So if we do it in six months or a year later, it, it could be a separate contractor, you're digging a hole on both sides of the road, putting a bore in and connecting it. So it's, it's the least impacted by the actual road construction. Does the Chicago and New York Avenue drainage uh, improvements help all of those streets in that area, or just those two? Again, this was one that was kind of put in as I got emails from everyone. Mm -hmm. So there were some that were individual streets, some that were, um, the way that I would look at this feedback is if the whole neighborhood kind of gets the same rating, I would prefer to look at it as an entire Baltimore, New York, do the entire neighborhood as one drainage improvement project if we could fund it. If there's one street in there that's much worse than others, then maybe we prioritize that one above it. It sounds to me from the feedback I'm getting that everybody's kind of suffering the same. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm the one that put that on there. Talk about Chicago, New York. Yeah. Because I've, I've gotten a lot of complaints. Right. Baltimore, yeah. Baltimore Boston. Yeah. And mainly over there in Boston, from, from what I'm understanding, it was a, a drainage at one point, but a lot of people came in there and they filled those spots in. Those they filled those uh, drain spots in and made their yards a little longer or extended, them. and that, that causes the, the, the clog is right there. So, yeah, sure. Yeah, so you know more about that than me, so. On eighty four, uh, Omobile Alleyway to a replacement. Now from Omobile Hospital, no, uh, yeah, ho Omobile Hospital Road. Uh, north South on Mobile to Eaton Street uh, North South. There's an alleyway there, which is always uh, water sits. Is, is that the, one of the, the places? Um, the water that's sitting up in that area, I'm kind of describing as number 96, that Tupelo Mountain Duncan Eden drainage. Oh, that's the same drainage? That's the drainage that's north of this area you're talking about? Right, because mm -hmm. it's almost like the, the drain that it makes a circle. Because there's... on the hospital road, right in front of the flower shop, there's a drain mm -hmm. that goes north, but that goes east and west. And then once you get, and then it turns and comes back south, then it goes back east again on Duncan, and then it's between Old Mobile Highway, Duncan, Eden Street, and Hop. It's, it's just, it's a circle. And, and there's some city-owned property up in there and some easements and whatnot that need to be 
reclaimed and addressed, and that's what this that project here okay. is. Okay, mm -hmm. but is that going to take care of the drainage system that runs east, northwest, east, south, north, south, east, west? I would anticipate this would collect various directions and get it out of there. Okay. <laughs> yes, sir. But you do know what I'm talking about. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Jackie, where's the Pelican Ditch? You familiar with where Pelican is? I'm trying to think. <laughs> I, can, I can pull it up. <laughs> the Pelican Ditch, I'm not familiar with the Pelican Ditch. That's a good point. I don't even know where Pelican is. Watch it be in my ward. <laughs> The problem is I'm going to have to stay back there, I reckon. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so right here, there's Pelican. Yeah. The first one, sorry, yeah. if you're here, you're over there on um, Orchard. Right. Pelican is this one right over in here. Okay. And so there's a ditch. Oh, it's in Arlington, this okay. And this across mm -hmm. up through the back and out that way. And this area back here is roading. It's all in there back where their fences are all falling. So this is all in the school <laughs> right there. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. Now I know. What number is Just, I got one more question uh, uh, on uh, Manto on the Things Avenue. Uh, I think I brought that to Mr. Uh, Garner's attention. There's a bridge down there that's reported to me by some of the bus drivers. Uh, that on our list. The county already is in oh, the middle. Right. Of, yeah, the county's the already in the middle of designing and okay, replacing right. that one. Yes. That's the one between yes. Parsley and Ingalls. I think so. I'm, I'm, that's I'm a bad bridge. That's that's one of the four it's that caving the in on, on one side. That's that's one of the four that the county's working on that that is very high priority. Where are we on uh, sinking the uh, lights on Market Street? Is that a project that would be included in here? Is it separate? I know at one time we talked about potentially county funds paying for that for um, the lighting system on Market Street. So that's the safety project that Ryan's been working with GRPC on. Sinking, S Y N C, not S I N K. <laughs> trying to figure out how we were putting them in the ground. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I get more complaints about that than anything else on this list, just, just about it. <laughs> for sure. That and John and uh, oh. Jackson on Fort Hinkert. Mm -hmm. hey, Jackie, explain to me the difference between retention ponds and detention ponds. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hopefully I'm going to get this correct. Hmm. Retaining means you hold it forever. Detaining means you slow it down. So retention ponds would basically be ponds that the water gets in and eventually soaks into the ground. Detention ponds are kind of the way that IG Levy works where it can go up about four feet and then it's metered out slowly. Uh -huh. And so it, and that's what most commercial developments have to incorporate now is detention ponds <clears throat> where they don't let water leave any slower than it used to. Number 24, the drainage improvements around Resurrection, is that on the LLV side or the um, That's gonna Sacred be Heart side? Downtown. So right here behind us. No, it's the other side, isn't it? You'll pass City Hall and turn left. <laughs> it's gonna be down yeah. around in okay. there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's one that Scott's been calling in for several years and hmm. never focused its way up to the Hi. top.
Are we cheating over here? Copying off each other? <laughs> full traffic signal study evaluation entail and how much does that cost <sighs> when we first put together a proposal i want to say it was in the neighborhood of seventy-five thousand, and it was the idea was to go to every signal that we have in the city evaluate them um compare them to warrants figure out mm -hmm. are there any that are no longer necessary um are there some that really need to be fine-tuned as far as the timing goes and Overall, I think that scope is modified with things that have changed over time, so we'd have to get a new proposal and look at that. Um, but <coughs> when, when we first looked at it, it was in that neighborhood of seventy-five to 100000 This is not an easy job. <laughs> you want us to initiate it, just leave it like it is. It doesn't matter who they came from. I'm just adding up numbers. So once we finish with A, we go list 30 of the Bs? The way that I would approach it is to pick my 30 most important, and then I would go through and pick 30 that I don't think were important and make those the Ds, and then that leaves you 60 in the middle to split between Bs and Cs. We want A, B, and C, and D. <laughs> Well, that worked for me. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of stuff that needs to be done. B C. I don't have any room for B. Right. It'll all balance out. Are you finished? You're talking about library building improvements. Last I heard, there was about $4.5 million worth of repairs. We've got serious issues with the skylight, with the roof, windows, the walls leak. So you got four and a half million for the library, and then you have five and a half, or five point eight, I think it was, for the police department. Probably. That's about a ten million. Add in some city hall and some city halls permitting are, and city hall is a ten million dollar problem. <laughs> if, if we could ever pull off that one combined municipal complex, it would be. Definitely. Well, and, you know, we talked about that originally. Of course, the timing's bad to do it when you when we ran into the deficit. But uh, <clears throat> did we work out of eight buildings? Is that it? Seven or eight buildings? Yeah. And if you combine what it cost the city to work out of all those buildings, Not and insurance, the light bills, uh, you know, copy machine, internet, driving back and forth. Driving, yeah. <laughs> Versus uh, just going ahead and bite the bullet building the new city hall. We would be way, way, way money ahead, sir. Where's the Bayou Chico boat head replacement? Down there off of Bates area, south of Ingalls. There's several areas of bulkhead in there that are failing. I'm down there by the boat launch and all that stuff down through there. Uh, Bates, right? Like Bates and Ingalls Avenue. Bates and
just as a side comment, one year that we did this effort, I've done this a few times, um, one year when we did this effort, we did it just like this with the council. We also did um, department heads and, and assistants um, with staff, and then we did a separate effort with the Strategic Plan Steering Committee, did the exact same analysis, and then provided the council a comparison of those um, perspectives, and it was really kind of interesting to see which things were consistent and which things were different. I was going back through some notes the other day just to find the documents to start from, and uh, it was, was kind of neat to see how many things were really consistent across the board. You good with just A's and B's? However you want to do it, yes, sir. Yeah, how do you put? Well, you put write somebody write D on here. Watch what happens. <laughs> somebody get because somebody will ask for D. You'll be catching all kind of thing for putting them on the back burner. I think the interesting thing you'll get out of this, though, is that you will not even be able to fund all your A's. This just puts them in a line. Yeah. And, and really, what the, a, a secondary benefit of this is it, it gives me a list the that problem. I understand how you guys feel, so that if I'm looking at something six months from now, um, I have some pipe left over and I've got a crew that's got two weeks of free time, I can look at this list and say, okay, project number 17 and project 42 both take the same amount of effort. I see them as being equal, but you guys picked 17. So I go do that one first and then, and then move. So it, it gives me some background information moving forward also. Not all of these will require massive amounts of capital investment. Some of them can be done if if fit in, um, it's just there's a lot of them, so we can't get to all of them. Jack. People on Facebook must be riveted. <laughs> the top of our heads while we fill out survey forms.
Yeah. <laughs> totally disappointed. Where's Ford Avenue located? There you go. Hmm? Ford Avenue? Yes, sir. Um, you know where Pasco or Trent Lot is? Right. Okay, it runs right there. Uh, if you're going east and west? south, yeah, if you're going south mm -hmm. uh, on uh, Pasco and you're coming up to Trent Lot. Mm -hmm. It's on your right, and it goes back. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so, so the front lot is right here, mm -hmm. and then Ford Avenue comes across, and right where that bayou. Okay. Is yeah. Through, I kind of got about that, yeah, yeah, that bridge has been um, closed off okay. for a few years. So that should be. The stuff that I had has more to do with the infrastructure drainage, not so it's just an overlay. Say all A's and B's with this If that's what you're up for. That's what I'm up for. <laughs> <laughs> Just the mayor still. Are you finished? No, mine's been.
So just to reiterate, in case those at home are watching and have been wondering what in the world y'all were doing, um, as I told y'all last council meeting, one of the reasons why we did it this way was to get objective data. Um, so if y'all had time to read the list and see it and not ask questions before this, mostly you probably wouldn't know all the stuff that you got. That you wouldn't be able to clarify with, with Ms. Jackie, for number one. Mm -hmm. Number two, um, you'd have had time, and, and having formally sat there, I understand how this works, you'd have time to call your colleague and said, hey, let's do this, number one, number two, whatever, and it wouldn't have been as objective as, as it should have been. So that's why this was kind of hit on you tonight the way it, 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 it was, to make sure that it was objective, it, it was individually ranked, so we all could tell from staff level what the council as a, as a whole prioritized, not just one or two people, if that makes sense. So now on to the paving goes. So we've got about $1.9 million in county paving fines that we have access to for this re remaining budget year. Uh, as you'll see in front of you, those um, streets have been highlighted. The ones that have estimates came from uh, the county road department. The ones that don't have estimates, those have been submitted by council since, um, since that time or have been in, in conversation with staff since that time. One that's not on there, that should be on there is Tupelo. If you will add that at the bottom. Uh, for um, paving needs. Um, we've exchanged a number of emails on that, but for some reason they just didn't make the list on, on this printed version, but please add the, at, at the bottom. But as you'll see, there are five of the estimates um, <coughs> previously asked from the county. The county does do these, these estimates. They do provide these to us. So if y'all decide to do estimates or, or, or do work on our paving work on streets that are not currently estimated, we'll get those back to you as, as well. But what I want you to do is take a second and look at, at, at these, rank the top five, one, two, three, four, and five. It's just simple as that. Um, and then whatever funds are left after I get those estimates, if, if there are extra funds available, uh, I'll come back to you and say, hey, we still have X number of dollars left based on um, this sheet. And then we'll do this again at a, at a council meeting going forward, but right now, all I need is your top five. You want our top five off this list. You don't want us to go through each one and mark one, two, three, four, No, five. just take, take say, for, for example, if you have Bel Air Street, is that number one? Put number one. If you have Seco, put that in number two. Okay. Or just those those streets are listed oh, here. I'm, okay, I messed up. All right. Yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> just five. Just well, five out of the entire <laughs> list. So just think about well, five of them and put one, two, three, four, or five next to five of okay. them. And also yeah. attached You're are about some to get maps. A bunch of them. We're about to pay some roads. So <laughs> attached are, are some maps in case you're curious where the streets are. So you, you have for, for reference points. But 1.9 million, basically, if you do the ones that are highlighted, and also let's clarify, on Beach Boulevard, and if you're not willing to pave it, I mean, if you want to just stripe it, that's going to be, what, Jackie, about 35000 40000 for striping on Beach Boulevard? Oh. So, so around, let's say 50. So if you want to just stripe Beach Boulevard versus just instead of paving it, then you just circle stripe and then make it a priority number. Um, but the rest of these are all about paving. Just something concerning that the pavement. Um, yes, sir. Ingalls, the the, the, the um, East Bank. Yes, sir. They're under construction. Are we going to have a specific route, uh, generate a route? Are they uh, going to have the big certain, trucks or the, or the exactly the employees? I was in behind four of those eighteen wheelers on Market Street yesterday. Yes, sir. Well, no one yesterday. It was Friday, I believe. It was. And I'm looking at. Market Street is already cracking. Yes, sir. So the the From main the main to, the main yeah. corridor for all the English traffic that we're encouraging their big trucks and their employees to use okay. is uh, Market Street. So I'm saying we're going to have a Pacific route. They're just going to be able to roam the city. Well, we can't control everyone. We are telling Ingles that we prefer them to go down Market to right. Ingles. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So we do have. That's what we've told Ingles. We, we, we prefer that because we don't want them to get them on past school street next to the schools and having quality yeah. traffic there. Same thing with downtown corridors. It's just not enough space for them yeah. to come, come through. Plus, we don't have the, given the fact that it's four lane on market versus those side streets, it's just, it's not practical to go with well, those neighborhoods. Uh, Chico. Yeah. 
you need a paper. That thing read that chicken scratch. There you go. Okay. Is that everybody? Yeah, once you get Mr. Fournette's, then I'd recommend a recess. We will do it. All right, so we'll take a uh, five minute recess. Everybody's in. Go ahead. Okay, so um, just to recap on the paving, here's the results for that, just so everyone knows on the council. Uh, highest rating paving project was Omobile Highway from Market to Chico, so we'll move that forward first. Um, second highest rated was Bel Air Street, Ingalls to Washington. That was second. Third was Pascula Street, Highway 9 to Beach Boulevard. Fourth, which we don't have an estimate on, which I'll, I will get and bring back to you, but Ingalls Avenue from Market to Louise. And then the fifth was Beach Boulevard um, from Point to Washington. So as this works, you get about 1.9 million. So with the first, say, four projects take up the funding for this year, the, the, the fifth one will move to next year's uh, priority list, if, if that makes sense, okay? So you'll have number one, Omobile Highway, two, Bel Air, three, Pascua Street, four, Ingalls Avenue, and five, Beach Boulevard. And then was Ms. Jackie gets hers almost ready. So that's, uh, that's the sequence. And um, when does that, when do you estimate? I will get them to uh, Joe O'Neill tomorrow morning, first thing. Okay. Is the Beach Boulevard just the striping? No, it was it's paving. It's the whole paving. Man, it doesn't need to be paved. I, I mean, I, I just, I hate to see us spend that money. But my, my estimate, based on what you've got here, you got so you got 1.3, 1.4, plus the Ingalls Avenue. You probably will not get to that this budget year. Good. I agree. The whole yeah, I would put it paved. five, because that, that's 800,000. It's like so. around close to your house with bridges. I pull my boat down there and the boat was about to bounce off the trailer. So right there at the bridge. If, I, if, I had to, if I had to tell you, you probably won't get Beach Boulevard this year. It'll probably be next well, year. Well, I mean, at the so. worst case, could you, could you mill it? Uh, at the worst case, we could do part of it, most likely. Mm -hmm. So, I know um, yeah, I know there's several buckled there are. areas there. It's like going through a... Yes. That bridge is like you were saying. It's like, it's, like it's like you get, it's like a speed bump. That's is what that it like about. the one over there on the, uh, what is it? Coming yeah. Angle. I hit that airport. Yeah, that's the one I grabbed. Yeah, the sad right thing off. about it though is that project is less than a year old. I know, that's what the one I grabbed or heard that's, about all the that's time. That's the sad thing about it is it wasn't done right to begin with. Amen. Yeah. Well, I'm thinking, why couldn't you just take some asphalt and, and stand it out that far? Get that big truck steamroller. Yeah. If it works well, I gripe with them about that all the time. Every time I come. So, Ms. Turner is printing out your results now. Get them back to you. So, give me just a second. The uh, one over here on Candy by Ingalls, that bridge. Yes, that's on her. Have you ever heard me write about that? A number of times. <laughs> uh, but yes, that's on her list uh, for my in, in house. Like Scott standpoint. said, though, that thing's so, like so a so year old. old. It, and, it's correct. And, it's correct. Uh, yeah. 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 Unfortunately. <laughs> but yes. You about have to replace you your shocks every time you go through there. That's the Bayou Joe's Cribs. So. River, right? So give her just about five minutes and she'll yeah. be ready to go. Um, he says Ingalls illegally filled and covered. I was trying to think there was one more that we uh, we were talking about that um, when you hit. Oh, the the uh, the other one is that that one on uh, Ingalls Avenue that's a, I don't know, it's a 30 inch sinkhole that you got to drive through. It's not really 30 inches, but it feels like it when you come out of it. You know what the it's one not, not, the far from, not far from Steve, Steve Jordan's house. Yeah, right there. Mother of God, that thing has gotten worse and worse. Right. And I, it, it literally is about that deep, but it's, it's, it's yeah, well, I, it's, I went through one the other day and I'm trying to remember where it was and I can't remember. The one that infuriates me the most is, I'll tell you, is the project there at Martin and Ingalls. 
if you're if you're going east on Ingalls Avenue and you ride over that new project, it's a lot rougher than the left lane, which is the old asphalt. And I don't get why, when you have a project like that, you sign off on it. Right. I wouldn't sign off on that. I would still be raising cane if they hadn't got it fixed. Right. Of course, I understand the dynamics of that bad contractor kind of thing and all that. But you, it's just, it's boom, boom, you know. Well, given the fact that y'all rank that in tar part of your projects, I don't get fixed. No. Mm -hmm. Well, at least we don't <laughs> have to replace all the pipe in there and then right. get it fixed. I'm going to preface this part of the conversation with the fact that this was done very quickly and I'm going to check stuff tomorrow, make sure we didn't screw anything up. But okay. assuming that this process worked and I did all the tallying correctly, here are your results. Okay. The number on the left remains the same as the number in the initial list. So starting up with Buena Vista down is in order. Right. The total score on the side is kind of when you combine any A that you voted for got four points, any B got three, any C got two, any D got one, so you add it up across. Um, so the Buena Vista design and easement acquisition and the Briarwood both unanimously got all A's. Mm -hmm. The Boxwood was short one, one person put a B. Um, and then all the way down the list to the bottom. If, like for instance, uh, in the middle there where you see a whole bunch of 21s, those are all exactly even. They're not ranked otherwise other than just that's the number that they had on them before. Um, so I don't know if you want to take uh, a minute and kind of digest it. Yeah, we'll look at it and see. But I tell you, I'm, I'm, is the, the Buena Vista is Lisa Keene's it is Place. that project is totally to construct and everything is probably in the neighborhood of three to three and a half million the what i am proposing at this point is to finish the design all the permitting and acquire all the easements with this money so that it is shovel ready and while we're finishing that that we continue to look for funding to, to pay for the construction we got to get that done because it just doesn't affect her but you start to take a shower with a dribble of water we, we got two new houses right there in yeah. It's going to be going online too. Yeah, so the additional funding that we're working on now, that needs to be dedicated just strictly to that. As we get that, we're, we're entering that last kind of 10 to 20 percent of the design, which is when we define the easements. It may take some refining, depending on if any certain easements are impossible to get or some are easier. Um, once we get that completed, we'll have a definite final design and a much better cost estimate and we'll be using that to try to get some funding to pay for the construction. Um, I think what we wanted, what we were hoping tonight is as y'all are looking through this list, um, I think you've pretty convincingly agreed that the top three priorities that the staff presented are also yours. And the combination of the remaining design const and construction for the Briarwood and Boxwood, the remaining design and the easement acquisition for Buena Vista, as I said, is estimated just over 1.1 million. And if y'all are comfortable with moving forward with those, those are all projects that we have previously authorized and we've kind of put on hold pending funding. If y'all are good with that, we can get the train moving again on those three. And then we can continue to look at this list as how you want to allocate the remaining 1.3, 1.4 million. Well, I mean, you got the list with the top three that we all agree on, so. Well, I mean, I that's kind of what we were hoping to leave with tonight. If you guys are good with that, those are no, all approved I, I, projects. Look, we, you know, because of the, the deficit railroaded us, let's move forward and get them, get them done. We need to be getting everything we can get done done, I believe. Do we need any kind of motion on that or just? Well, I'd like to see some more details about funding. I mean, like I said, this was kind of a poke in the dark kind of deal. I'd like to see the funding, what you think is a priority. I mean, you got, you know, 10 cave-ins, which I was hoping they would all make it, but I mean, one may take $5,000 to fix and right. one may and take some of those, and, and, you know, some of those, if they come down here on the bottom of the second page, but it only costs me 5,000 and a free crew, mm -hmm. then that may go off the list pretty quickly. Those are, I mean, we're, we're not gonna 
ignore you're the bottom. You're talking about the, the first three, though, right? I'm saying if y'all are comfortable the with first the first three. three, that still leaves about 1.3 million to well, prioritize. The first three have been on there for the six years I've been on the council side. So let's hit it. So yeah. if we can continue to work towards those, I'm fine with that part of it. But some of these other ones that, like I said, would just kind of, you know. Right, and, and, and that's, part that's of what. That's up to you, I mean. So. Part of what we were intending at this point, when you look at a list of 120 projects and trying to get every one of those fully defined and estimated really takes a lot of time and effort. At this point, when we're looking at the priority like this, we'll spend some good time on the top part of this list getting some good numbers so that y'all can really decide how you want to allocate that remaining 1.3 million. No, I, th I think uh, if you got on the first three, we would be good. Um, but I'm like, Scott, if you can find some low cost ones and we can knock some low hanging fruit out, 5,000 here, 6,000 here, pop 20 projects out. We absolutely out. will. And some of these are small like that and we well, will let's, be hitting let's, them. Let's identify those. There's probably 30 in here that you could do fairly easy comparatively. You know, if you take number one, how complex versus something. And I, so and I think what, what why don't you find, identify those and I bring will. them back to us? I will. And some of those, um, if we already have pipe on the yard and, you know, some of the, the limestone and the dirt that the county helped us with, if we have that material already available, those are going to be worked through um, and we'll work through them kind of in the order you prioritize them. You know, if I have three projects that are each $5,000 projects, yeah. we'll go one, two, three and start knocking them out and cross them off the list. That's, that's absolutely going to happen. Well, um, I think that would be great for everybody after what we've been through to see some of these projects moving. And what I'll do is, um, based on this priority list, I'll start refining cost estimates for the things that are towards the top of the list. I'll maintain that first list with the project numbers that y'all voted on, and I can share that with you and start filling in more detail on the highest priorities and go. But I guess I guess the only question I have is, do we need any kind of formal motion to move on the three since no, they were all approved? Time, we'll have to get a budget at some point, so in the next couple of weeks, you'll we'll see a budget move on these, but right now it's just a headline spot. Okay. Not, not. We'll keep on going. Thank you very much. I'm sorry for Thank the you. frustrating oh. time it took. <laughs> no, this is good stuff. Good stuff. Anything else, Frank? All right. So I have a motion to adjourn. So moved. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed?